Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. Well, as you can see, I don't have a guitar on my workstand right now, and that's because I just recently finished the six string multi-scale fan fret guitar. So now I'm ready to start another project. And what I've decided to build is a 3D printed guitar. And this is gonna be the first in a series of videos covering that whole build. So let's jump in and get started. So the first thing I did was I laid out the fretboard in FretFine 2D, and then I exported it as a PDF file, which I then imported into Adobe Illustrator. And I used it as a template so that I could redraw it the way that I like to make a fretboard. And it's important to understand the fretboard is gonna be made out of wood while the rest of this guitar is gonna be 3D printed. And I'll explain more about that later. But then what I did was I continued by drawing out the neck using the fretboard as the basis. And I added the heel, the headstock, the three by three tuner configuration, a slot for the truss rod, and then slots for carbon fiber reinforcement rods. And then once I had the neck drawn, the next thing I had to do was to lay out the design of the body. And as you can see, it's gonna feature a couple of humbuckers and it's going to use a hardtail bridge and then a control cavity which will feature a tone pot a volume pot and a three-way toggle switch then i brought the elements into rhinoceros 3d and laid out the basic shape of the body the neck and the fretboard but what i did here for the body is i broke it up into pieces since they're not all gonna you know the entire body won't fit on my 3d printer and then i use indexing pins so that i can align all the different parts of the body and as you can see here the body is going to be made up of six different parts which will be 3d printed and then glued together so having those little indexing pins is going to help me to get everything lined up and this is what the body will look like once it's all glued together so uh, pretty straightforward approach to doing this and then the next thing i did was the neck and it's basically set up the same way it's going to be cut up into three pieces which are then glued together with indexing pins to help get everything lined up properly and the indexing pins are really important here because when I glue these together, I'm going to be using CA glue or super glue, cyanoacrylate. And because it sets up almost instantly, I need to have indexing pins so that I can make sure that everything is going to line up as soon as I apply the glue and push the parts together. I don't want you know, the chance for things to be off. But this is what the neck will look like once it's fully assembled. Hey guys, if you're really enjoying this video, it would be awesome if you would click that thumbs up button down below. And if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button while you're at it. Both are free to do. They don't cost you anything, and it's a great way to show my channel support. But if you really want to get the most out of this channel, I would suggest you click the join button down below because as a member, you're going to have access to exclusive content that contains a lot more information and detail than the rest of my videos on this channel. Also, you're going to have access to my Q&A live streams. Now let's get back to the video. And then for the fretboard, since it's going to be made out of wood, and I chose to do that because um, 3D printing a fretboard with slots to accommodate the frets doesn't work. I tried it in tests and my 3D printer just isn't high enough resolution to do that. I would probably have to use a resin 3D printer in order to achieve that and I just really wasn't interested in using my resin 3D printer for this. I just wanted to use my filament printer. So that's what I did and therefore the fretboard is going to be made out of wood. So I have to make a 3D model of the fretboard without the frets and this is going to be for the radius on the top surface. That's going to be carved on my CNC machine. So once I had that radius, I imported it into MeshCam. And there I was able to assign the bits and tool paths to do a rough carving operation as well as a parallel finish operation. And this is going to carve a 12-inch radius on the top surface of the fretboard. And the total uh, time it takes for me to do this on my CNC machine 
is about 18.6 minutes. So uh, it'll be done pretty quickly and it's going to be really smooth. So then what I did was I imported those elements for the fretboard into Easel Pro software, which is the software I use to control my CNC machine. So I have a file for drilling the marker dots and carving the slot for the nut. And then I also have the uh, a file for um, cutting the slots in the fretboard. And so I have to arrange these all in separate carving operations since each operation uses a different bit. But then what I can also do is I can um, import the file that I created in MeshCam for doing the radius. And that helps me to keep all my different carving operations organized so that um, I know which operations need to be carved and in what order. Uh, but I find that's really important. You know, you've got to know what order you're going to be doing all these different carving operations. But like for cutting the slots, it's only going to take me about 31 minutes to cut those slots, which is pretty quick when you compare that to hand cutting them with a saw and a jig. Um, but then like here's the um, G code file that I imported for carving the uh, radius on the surface of the fretboard. And that operation will take 21 minutes. So it's pretty quick to do this. Um, that's one of the nice things about using a CNC machine to make these sort of parts. It can be done so quickly. Um, but then once I've got that radius carved, then the next thing is to finish the fretboard by cutting out the perimeter shape and liberating it from the blank that the fretboard is cut from, which in this case is going to be Paduk. So that's just a brief overview of what went on behind the scenes as I was preparing the files for printing the guitar body and neck, as well as doing the CNC carving for the fretboard. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to actually start the process of printing the guitar, and that'll happen in part two. So I hope that you'll come back and uh, enjoy that episode once I get it posted up. In the meantime, though, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. And if you really want to help support this channel, you can click the join button down below and you can choose from two different tiers of membership. And there you're going to be able to see the same basic content that you get to see on my channel now, but you're going to see members only content that has a lot more detailed information about some of the stuff you just saw. So uh, I would encourage you to consider joining. And you can also visit my eGuitar Plans website or my Highland Guitars merch store. And any purchase you make there is going to help support this channel so that I can keep building guitars and sharing my knowledge and experience with you. And if you want to keep your support simple, you can always click the thanks button and leave a tip in the amount that you think is fair. And also, if you've got a question that you really want me to answer, you can include your question with your tip, and I promise I'll get back to you and answer it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, at any rate, um, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for more future guitar building videos.